If you look at property, the things that really affect residential property prices is interest rates, unemployment and also immigration. Interest rates are fine. You know, for the next few years at least, we know that interest rates are going to be consistently low. And in, and in fact, you know, they could, whereas now they're in the 2%, they're quite likely to go into, into the 1% uh, range for um, people buying at least their first home or their second homes. Um, now, what the, the other thing um, we're seeing, of course, is that in the past there's been a, a lack of investors, and we suspect that once um, we, rates reach a particular point, um, it'll be very, very difficult to actually buy something that's negatively geared. So it's quite likely when mums and dads are out buying property, they're, they're going to be buying property to get a, an income return out of that property. So we haven't seen a lot of investors this year, but I suspect that investors will start coming through again next year. Now, the other two issues I raised was unemployment and also immigration. Obviously, with unemployment, that's a big factor, particularly during the December quarter. Um, but again, we're likely to see through uh, government stimulus and the like that unemployment will gradually decline over next year. Probably the biggest factor is immigration. I mean, immigration has really been the backbone of GDP growth um, in Australia. And uh, uh, the question is, is well, well, where do we stand if we don't have migrants coming into Australia? Where does that stand? Where does it make us stand in terms of property prices? Now, once we get a vaccine, and you put your a forecast and casting hat on, I think once we get the vaccine, um, and uh, it'll be a case that if you want to come to Australia, you've got to get your vaccine certificate. Um, you probably have to go through testing at the airports and again when you get off the plane. Um, but once we do open up uh, the borders, I, I suspect we'll have a lot of people around the world putting their hand up. And it's quite likely we might actually see double the intake of what we saw in 2019, simply because we've got to make up for 2020. So in 2021, it might actually be uh, quite a big increase in terms of in terms of population growth. And I think that'll be um, a, a big bonus for um, property. I like property in Brisbane. I know I sound quite parochial, but you, you look at it compared to our southern counterparts. Um, Brisbane really hasn't had a property boom now um, since the early 2000s. So it's almost 17, 20 years ago. Um, and over that time, we've gone through the floods. We've also gone through periods of high unemployment within Queensland. We haven't had a lot of infrastructure spending like what's happened in Sydney and Melbourne. But, but I suspect um, moving forward that we're actually going to benefit from overseas migration, but also through um, interstate migration as well. Um, and uh, I think we started to see that start to improve last year. And of course, if, if you're sitting in, in Melbourne and lockdown um, and you're looking at your property prices in Melbourne versus what you can buy up here, it's quite compelling to move, providing of course you can get that job. And that's probably the, the one uh, question mark over the sustainability of property growth in Queensland.